Hello, welcome to the Litchfield Park Historical Museum. My name is John Donahue and I'll be your docent today as we take a tour of the outside of our museum. Today we have, we're going to start with the house. We're housed in what's affectionately called Aunt Mary's house. And Paul Litchfield built this house for his sister-in-law, Mary Britton Tubbs. He built this house and they moved in in January of 1941. And Mary and her husband, who had retired, were the groundskeepers for all of this land you see out here. Over here, right against the house, we have a tire. We have a Goodyear tire. And this is uh, perfect to have right here. This was given to us by our good friends at SNS Tires. Thank you very much to the wonderful Slagle family. Um, it's important that we have this here because it was just in 1917, a little over 100 years ago, that Paul Litchfield arrived right here working for Goodyear Tire and Rubber uh, to find a place to grow cotton to make their tires. Uh, at that time, the tire technology was such that they used cotton in making tires. And we had a boll weevil infestation in the south, and we were getting our supply of cotton from Egypt, but that was getting interrupted by World War I. So Goodyear Tire and Rubber sent Paul Litchfield here, and they knew that Arizona was very much like Egypt in terms of climate and soil, and, and they began to grow a 1917 tire cotton to make tires. So this is a wonderful Goodyear tire. Um, next to that, as we move along, we have some items that have been here and gathered and were on Goodyear farms for many years. Um, these wagon wheels, these wooden wagon wheels, as you can see, um, it was told to me by a, a very good friend, a local, a uh, very highly esteemed and multi-generational farmer, T. Gladden, pointed out to me that these wagon wheels were most likely made pre-1900. After 1900, wagon wheels were made of steel, so these are uh, still in pretty good shape for, for being as old as they are. Right next to the wagon wheels, as you can see, are two horse-drawn plows. And uh, this plow over here is of a special interest. You see, John Deere was a blacksmith, and in the 1830s, the only plows available were plows that came from the East Coast, which were made for the sandy East Coast soil. And the plows did not work so well in the Midwest, and they would get clogged up. And John Deere was a very inventive and smart blacksmith, and he decided, I'm going to make a new plow that will work in this thick, cloddy Midwest soil. And he patented and designed the first stainless steel plow. That's the cutting edge of the plow. That's what you see right here. And he actually used a saw blade as his first plow. And with that stainless steel and that saw blade, it just cut right through. Well, production went through the roof. He started sawing a lot of plows. And John Deere is actually one of the earliest firms on the US Stock Exchange. And so what's kind of fun is if you look at this plow, which we got from the Wigwam, which was owned by Goodyear Tire and Rubber, this is a John Deere plow. It's serial number 227 right there. So that's kind of fun history. Speaking of plows, over here we have a two-way mold board plow. This plow originally belonged to John Edge. You know, I, I have to tell you, Paul Litchfield was a wonderful man. He was always trying to help people. And uh, in response to the Great Depression, Paul started in 1937 the Apprentice Farmer Program. And the Apprentice Farmer Program was a program for young men who wanted to get into farming and they would work for Goodyear for two years, study college management textbooks, learn how to farm, and then after two years, Goodyear would sell them 80 acres of land. And they'd price the land so that the farmer could pay for it based on what crops were selling for that day. They made the deal work. Well, John Edge was a gentleman in that very first apprentice farmer's class, and this was his plow. So we're very fortunate to have that. Um, if you look across here, you can just see right up on the top of the hill, there's a house up there. That was Paul Litchfield's old house. And we'll have more to come on that later. Thanks so much for joining our tour. We'll see you later.